Hey everybody, Matt Hickey here. I'm Director of Customer Success for New York Metro at Microsoft. This short video is going to show you Office 365 Adoption Bot, which is a user care bot that can help drive adoption and reduce support costs. Application templates for Microsoft Teams are produced by the Teams Product Engineering Group. App templates are production-ready apps that are community-driven, open source, and available for free on GitHub. Each app template contains detailed instructions for deploying and installing. The source code is available so you can alter it to meet your specific needs. The app template we use for AdoptBot is the FACT Plus application template. This is a conversational Q&A bot, but also brings a human into the loop when it's unable to help. For more information on application templates for Microsoft Teams, visit aka.ms forward slash app templates. The goal of AdoptionBot is to improve the end user experience and drive adoption of modern collaboration technology. AdoptionBot answers common end user questions about Teams and Office 365, and if needed, will connect them to an expert or a champion. AdoptionBot is essentially a fork of FACT Plus with a 145 question spreadsheet, which I'll show you in a minute. AdoptionBot can be branded, for example, Ask O365, Ask My Company IT. AdoptionBot is a self-help facility that drives Teams and Office 365 at scale. We're using Teams to drive adoption of Teams. Ultimately, it could drive down support costs. Users can get questions answered by the bot. They don't need to open a ticket, therefore fewer support costs. These no-code bots knit a quick win for the project team. We can deploy one of these bots in just a couple hours. These also solidify and strengthen your champion's network. As they're answering questions, they're getting smarter and their presence within the organization grows. And then finally, AdoptionBot can adjust existing content. So if you have facts or support guides, you can easily pull those into the bot. Let's now look at a live demo of AdoptBot, the end user view. As you can see, I'm signed into Teams as Christy Klein, an end user. I want to first point out that you notice the AdoptBot is pinned to the left rail in Teams. It's really easy to pin applications using Teams App Setup Policy and Teams Administration Console. This makes it really easy for users to discover and use the bot. As you can see, I've asked some prior questions like, what does it mean to be app mentioned? Got a great answer. Let's start with taking a tour. This is gonna pop up a carousel of cards that shows us the main features of the bot. We can ask questions. If we're not happy with the answer, we can escalate or ask an expert. And then we can share feedback. Let's start with asking some questions. Maybe I'm switching from Skype and I need some tips. Bot came back. Hey, it looks like you're switching from Skype. Here's some tips. Here's an article with details. I'm going to click share feedback because this is particularly useful to me. The bot will pop up a simple form with a drop down. And I'll say that this feedback was super helpful. Thanks so much. I love Teams. I click share feedback. Now let's ask a different question. When will my mailbox be migrated? Maybe you've rolled out Teams prior to doing your Exchange Online conversion. So the answer we got back, it looks like we're gonna start moving mailboxes this summer for your schedule, reach out to your IT coordinator. Well, that doesn't work for me. I'm gonna click Ask an Expert. Again, the bot is gonna pop up a simple form. Please move my mail now and click Ask an Expert. So this concludes the end user view. We'll switch to the expert view shortly. Now for the expert view. I'm cited as expert Matt Hickey into Teams. You may have wondered where those feedback and escalation to ask for experts went in the prior demo. They land in a team that you set up, in my case, called Adoption Experts. This is typically staffed by a dozen, two dozen champions or experts within your organization. We can see we got a piece of feedback from Christy uh, related to switching from Skype that she loved the article. So I could view this article, or with a single click, I could initiate a Teams chat conversation with Christy. Let's now look at her ask for help. She wants her mailbox moved now. Again, I could view the article or I could chat with her directly. We also have a rudimentary ticketing system within the bot. So if I click change status, I can go ahead and assign this ticket or escalation to myself. So I know Christy, I got this one of the Champions Group. 
So this assigns net, this request is now assigned to Matt Hickey. Christy also gets that notification. I'd have the ability to again chat with Christy, maybe escalate to a phone call and calm her down about her mailbox not being moved. Once that's complete, I could again click change status and then close the ticket. The other cool thing that this bot has is a simple messaging extension. If we click the ellipse on the bottom of Teams, we launch the experts messaging extension. We get a quick view of the recent uh, tickets, the ones that are unassigned and the ones that are assigned. Now let's look behind the scenes of a dot bot. We're looking at the Azure portal and I have a resource group called the dot bot. When you go through the deployment guide, there's an ARP template that automatically creates 11 resources for you in Azure which are shown here. We can also look at the cost analysis of the service in Azure by clicking cost analysis. We'll see in a minute that this bot costs roughly $30 per month. I do get slightly better pricing working at Microsoft, but in your case, it'd be around 50. Another cool thing that we can do here in Azure is we can analyze the logs. So if we go back to the resource group and we look for a particular resource, bot name dash Q&A maker application insights, open this up. Next, we go into logs. Now, there's an article that I've linked at the end of this presentation, which gives you some sample queries to run against Q&A Maker, Fact Plus, a DocBot. I've saved these in my current Query Explorer. So quick query, query Explorer, my queries. And you can see we can run some of these interactively. So the late seed distribution of questions, top questions last month, unanswered questions as of yesterday. So this is a great way to get telemetry or information of who's using your bot, what type of questions they're asking. We can visualize this in different ways. What are some of the top questions to improve the efficacy? And what are some of the questions that are big misses that are currently unanswered? So it'll take a second to load, but we'll get results similar to latency distribution below. I've also taken this a step further and I've created a flow. If you look at my adoption experts team, we showed the general channel where the escalation feedback go. I have a sep second channel called reporting. This is where my flow once a day will run these analytics and then post them to this channel inside Teams. Here's a quick view of that flow and it's super simple. So once a day, we're gonna run some visual analytics query. This one is the top questions last week. And then we're gonna post it to Teams. I'm doing this twice because I'm running a second query. The technology behind Adoption Bot supports a wide range of sources for ingestion. We can point the bot to URLs, fax, or support pages, any sort of PDF or document, whether it be a product manual or support guide, Excel spreadsheets, and text files. The source I'm using for Adoption Bot is a spreadsheet with 145 quality Q&A pairs related to Office 365 and Teams. I'm happy to share this file with you if you send me an email. One common question is cost to run a DocBot. Now the application template is free on GitHub, but there are costs incurred as we run these services in Azure. This slide articulates the three key scale points of the application plan, the cognitive services, and the search services in Azure, and gives you a model for three size deployments. The first is a POC, which would support 500 questions per month, and that comes in at about $55 per month of Azure spend. The second model is for a smaller deployment that would support 2,500 questions per month. And as you can see, monthly price is roughly $160 per month. The final model is for a larger deployment that supports 25,000 questions per month and comes in around $230 per month. Please contact your local Microsoft account team for guidance on pricing Azure resources. Here's some learning resources I've discovered as I deployed a dot bot at several large customers. The first is that your champion's network could potentially be overwhelmed. You want to avoid setting a tight SLA for escalations to a dot bot. Unlike your service desk, this is peer support with people helping people and doesn't necessarily warrant the same tight SLA. Next, mobile pinning is currently rolling out in Office 365 service. A dot bot works great on mobile, but you may not see it pinned in the bottom until later this winter. Next, the deployment best practices. There's actually two apps. There's an expert app and a user app. My recommendation is to pin the, the user app tenant-wide using a Teams app setup policy and sideload the experts app into the experts team that you create. 
And then here's some resources for you. The app templates for Microsoft Teams. Again, we used the FAC Plus app template for our DotBot. The DotBot documentation, the Q&A Maker portal, which is the cognitive service that powers the DotBot. And then the article that I talked about in the demo where you can get some sample queries to run analytics on your knowledge base. Wow, thanks for making it all the way to the end. This concludes the overview of the Office 365 Adoption Bot. I truly hope this technology eases your journey to the cloud and helps you deploy and adopt Office 365 and Teams.